We have a special episode of QSC TV today. I am joined with Debbie from DES, and we're going to talk about everything opioid awareness related for the month of September, because as you know, QAC is going purple. So thanks for joining us today, Debbie. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Now, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff today. Can we get like kind of a rundown? What can people expect from our conversation? So we are going to be talking about the opioid uh, crisis. It's mm -hmm. a national crisis, um, and it certainly does affect us here in Queen Anne's County, right here at home. Um, so we're going to talk about the fact that it could happen to you and mm -hmm. your family and what you can do to empower yourself and be prepared and how to handle that. Yeah, so that's going to be some conversation we're going to have about Narcan, yes. getting yourself aware in the community. Yes. We're also going to talk about opioid orphans. Yes. Yep. Great. Sad so, topic, but yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. And we made a video about it, which we'll get to later. Yes. So if people have more questions. Okay. Well, let's just jump in. All right. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> so goes purple. It's a big deal. Can you tell us a little bit about what Queen Anne's County is doing this year and kind of how it affects us? Yes. So from the Department of Emergency Services perspective, um, we have a partnership that we work with. Um, we work with partners in the community. Queen Anne's County uh, Health Department has a peer, a peer specialist group um, that works with substance abuse, um, addictions, and, and things of that nature. And they're pivotal in what we do as first responders. Um, and what happens is once those patients are um, transported to a hospital, the provider that's treating the patient will make an alert um, to uh, get a hold of a peer specialist from our health department. And those peer specialists actually meet the patient at the hospital. And the idea there is to provide them immediate resources um, and to kind of hit them at that rock bottom moment. Mm -hmm. um, so peer specialists are um, folks that maybe have similar backgrounds who may be in recovery themselves. Um, so they are, they kind of have been there. Um, mm -hmm. or yeah, they we, have we've some, got to interview a couple yes, of them and they tell their story. Yeah. Super, super phenomenal group. Um, so they're really able to hit home with mm -hmm. those, with those patients. Um, so, you know, that's the idea is to give the overdose patient every opportunity um, to 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 get clean and be there for a better tomorrow. Right, and you talked about the county working as a whole. We actually have a picture. We'll throw that up. Yes. And this is this is everyone that you just discussed. Yes. It goes from the police and DES to the state's attorney. Yes. It's really neat to see it all working together. Yeah, it's definitely not a um, one organization uh, mm -hmm. attack. We are we are trying really hard to work with. Um, different organizations, the Drug Free Coalition, um, our partners. So it is it is a shared responsibility for certain, and we are asking that people in the community share some of that responsibility with us yeah. by taking um, taking and empowering themselves and learning how to give Narcan. Right. Yeah. And we'll get to Narcan in one second, as you say. You know, get knowledge and, and become aware. Mm -hmm. Go to QACGoesPurple.org. Yes. Tons of information. Absolutely. And always go to all of our events. Yes. We have the, the event on the first night. I this might air after that. But right. still, there are events all year long. Absolutely. I know there's a lot more in September, but yes. it's a year long thing. It is a year long thing. So you mentioned Narcan. Yes. And we have two pictures here. And you were telling me, what's the difference? So the it's very basic. Mm -hmm. um, the top picture is actually what Narcan would look like for provider use. So our first responders, our paramedics and EMTs, that's the um, the Narcan that we would have. And I believe even our Sheriff's Department carries um, this type of Narcan. And then your bottom Narcan is what you can get free from pharmacies, free from the health department with some very minimal training. Um, it's, it's almost like a nasal spray, so it's very easy to use. Um, and, and that is what you would get for free out there in, in the general community. Now, is there a difference? It's the only difference is the dosage. Mm -hmm. um, we start out with two milligrams, and the uh, community use Narcan starts out with four milligrams. So it's just a difference in dosaging, gotcha. and that just has to do with our um, state protocols as medical providers. Right. And we just administer medication a little bit differently. Um, but four milligrams is certainly what you would start with in the community. Now, you told me something that I never even knew. So I feel like it's something people really need to hear. Uh -huh. We were talking about Narcan usage, and people are a little nervous about it. They Absolutely. don't understand it. 
and they're even afraid to use it. Yes. But could you tell us why they don't need to be scared? So I think that folks um, are scared that they will hurt someone yes. or otherwise right. do cause further harm. Yeah, what if they don't need it? If they didn't need it. Right. And that is such a fear that we want to take away. Narcan does not affect a person who does not have opioids in their system. So um, it is safe for use for pregnancies. It's safe to use for children. It's safe to use for our geriatric population and all of those in between. Mm -hmm. So it will not affect someone unless there is actually an opioid present. So it's there's no harm here. If you give it and that person is not suffering from an opioid overdose, you have caused no further harm. Yeah, I could spray it right now in this chair and we could keep going and nothing yep. would change. Nothing's gonna happen. That's amazing, because I don't think a lot of people know that. I don't think they do either. Right? And I think it is super important for people to understand, don't wait for the first responders to mm -hmm. get there. Please don't wait for us to come, because we do, we, we are rural county, mm -hmm. and sometimes it may be several minutes could be 10 minutes before we get there and that's just a reality um, and those minutes count because what happens with an opioid overdose is essentially it causes respiratory depression meaning your breathing is going to diminish until right. it stops so once that happens we're looking at oxygen death so we, we, we need to take action immediately do not wait for someone else to take action, empower yourself, get out there and do it. Yep. And before we move on, the last thing is it's available. It's available to It's anyone. easy to get. You yep. can just show up right now and get some. You can get it. Right. Yep. Perfect. You just need to ask for it. Right. So let's move on to something else I know is very close to you. We have your t-shirt. We'll get a shot of that. Yeah. But we want to talk about opioid orphans. Yes. So hashtag opioid orphans. Mm -hmm. Did you start that? This yes. hashtag? Yeah. yeah. So we, we made the video with you. We did. So if you haven't seen it, you can go to our YouTube right now. You mm -hmm. can just search Opioid Orphans on QAC TV and you see the wonderful video we made. This yes. is a screenshot yeah. from it. Yeah. So, so can you tell us a little bit about Opioid Orphans? <laughs> Maybe we'll touch on this video and your shirt. Yeah. So um, Opioid Orphans is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I have been on uh, numerous calls in my um, career as a paramedic, um, where unfortunately we've lost folks to an opioid overdose and we've had children right in the room watching. Mm -hmm. um, and their, their children, it's their son, daughter, their niece, their nephew, um, sometimes multiple children, and children of, of varied ages, from car seats um, to teenagers. And for me, it's probably been one of the most heartbreaking things in my career mm -hmm. to watch um, because it very quickly turns into protecting that child. Um, and I have just really walked away thinking this, no child should ever have to witness this. No child should ever have to be left behind. There is help out there. Um, children can learn to give Narcan. Right. Um, and it's unfortunate, but that is where we are um, as, as a country. But um, it's, it's just so near and dear to my heart. And I want to make sure that we empower children um, to, to teach them to new, use Narcan and to offer them resources as well. There are resources that can help children. It is a proven fact that children who witness their parent or a loved one overdose are very susceptible to overdosing themselves mm -hmm. later on in life. And that is totally preventable. Right. So we have the power to do that. Yeah. And we made this video with you. We did. And it should be a warning. I mean, I, I want everyone to go watch it, mm -hmm. but it is a trigger warning because mm -hmm. this is a very impactful video. Mm -hmm. I mean, and when people watch this, and it is, it's someone going through opioids, it's a daughter finding their, their mother passed mm -hmm. out and, you know, yeah. all the problems that go with it. This was real, right? I yes. mean, I was not a real item, but this is exactly what it would look like. Yeah, this is, um, and this is probably toned down a little bit, really? actually. Okay. Um, because it's very intense. Um, it, is a, it is an intense uh, environment. Um, and, you know, even um, for those that don't know, the young person in this video was actually my daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had agreed to play um, the role of, of the daughter. And 
Um, she was uh, equally impacted by making this video as those that had watched it. Oh, I'm sure. Um, and it was a great opportunity. We are very open and we talk about things and I encourage parents to talk to their children. Um, if you are uh, in an environment where you have grandchildren, grandchildren in your home or nieces and nephews or um, and you have someone in your family who has an opioid addiction, talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, don't pretend it's not happening. Get help. There is help available. Yeah, and um, we're slowly eliminating that stigma of I being able to are. talk. And I know it's still a battle for some, especially yes. if you're in it. Yes. But yeah, the, it, it's being erased slowly, yes. and that's only with the help of the community and people. Absolutely. We have to keep, keep the conversations these, yeah, going. By all these partnerships, I yes. think it's a yeah. phenomenal thing, and, and we, can, we can make a difference. Yeah. So. so before we leave off opioid orphans, and in general, you have a shirt yes. that we can get a shot of. Can you tell us about yes. that shirt? Is that something that people would be able to get? So we don't actually, um, we're, obviously we're a local government. We don't, yeah. we don't sell the shirts, right. but what we do with the shirts is all of our staff wear these shirts for the month of September. Oh, and okay. we are just using that as a public service announcement to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. We want to be out and about talking about these things. Um, our staff, from everyone, from our telecommunicators, our 911 dispatchers, who are taking the calls from children like this, um, to our first responders, our paramedics, our EMTs, to even those who are in emergency planning, we are all addressing the opioid crisis in one way or another. Please talk to us about, us, it, about this. If you see us with the shirt on and you have questions, please grab us. We are happy to have the conversation and happy to help get you in the right direction. Right. So we just want that to be out there and be visible. And it's awesome because you guys do something different every year. You've worn the Go Purple shirts before. Yeah. You, and mm -hmm. you guys really bring a lot of awareness by yeah. wearing that around town. Yep. In the, even the people in the offices in the office, that yes. people don't normally come in and see, yep. they're all wearing them. But if they go to Acme or somewhere to grab yeah. lunch and they're out and about, we just really want to be visible out there yeah. and let people know they're not alone. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And wave hi to them when you see them. Yes. <laughs> and all these hashtags are on the shirt. These Absolutely. are the hashtags that we're using this year. We're yep. talking about QAC goes purple hashtag, the opioid orphans. It can happen to your family. Yes. I, I have to imagine, as sad as it is, that everyone knows someone at this point. Like, it's just... You'd be surprised. It's sad. Yeah, it's really... It, it is a very... Um, it is a non-discriminatory problem. Yes. So That anyone can fall into. Anyone. Yep. And it's not just about someone who's out there shooting up heroin. Right. I think we have to acknowledge that that is not always the case. Yeah, it's a student who hurt their knee. It it's could, a father who hurt yes. their back. Yeah, it's it a lot. Be, it's everywhere. It could be someone elderly who has just, by accident, taking too much of a prescribed medication. Right. So, I, you know, we want to make sure that people understand this is not just um, the junkie on the corner yes. that you see in the movie. That's yep. That's not even really a reality all the time. This is about everyone you meet has probably been touched by addiction in one way or another. Right. Yep. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for You're coming welcome. in, talking about raising awareness. I know there's so much more we can talk about. Yes. There's so much more we can show, and we're going to. We we'll are. have more videos coming out throughout September. Yes. Yeah. But in the meantime, if you want some more information, head to qacgoespurple.org and get all the things that are going on in the community, you know, they have toolkits, digital toolkits that can help and give you mm -hmm. more information. And we'll keep making videos for you and look out for all the amazing content throughout Queens County from DES, yes. from the government, from the sheriff, from the you know, state's attorney, from the health department, everyone in Queens County is working together in September to raise awareness on opioid addiction. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.